All right, to talk more about this, joining me now is America's lawyer and Ring of Fire radio host, Mike Papantonio. Mike, good of you to be with us today. So tell me, why, why do you think the EU parliament is uh, essentially aligning Russian media, including RT, on the same threat level as ISIS? Well, it has to do with not just politics. I mean, you have the war hawks out there. They want to sell more weapons. They love the, the intrigue of another Cold War. Uh, then you have corporate media. And, and in, in, in corporate media, part of that is, is mega corporations around the world. Now, think about this. Let me tell you what real propaganda is. If I call ABC or CBS or NBC and I say, will you please do a story about a drug that is killing thousands of women every day? And by the way, the drug is manufactured by Pfizer or Merck or whatever, some, some advertiser. They'll say, no, we can't do the story because our advertiser won't let, won't let us. That's what Jill Stein was just talking about. You can't get these stories out in corporate media. So now what we're seeing in the U.S., and I see it firsthand, the reaction to, uh, to Russian television is, gee whiz, they're actually telling stories that we won't tell. And that's very bothersome to corporate media. It's very bothersome to Wall Street when you can go on the air and talk about a product like, uh, like talc powder that may be causing cancer in women. Well, you can't get uh, ABC or CBS to do a, a story on Johnson & Johnson. They, they pay millions of dollars every year in advertising. That is propaganda. And so this notion that, gee whiz, Russia is involved with propaganda, I've been a commentator on and off for RT for years. Not one time, not one time have I been asked to say anything other than what the truth of the story was. Not one time. But I've also done MSNBC, where I was told I could do no more stories because I talked about one of their advertisers and they got mad. That's the contrast here. So this isn't just about the crazy baby boomer war hawks or the crazy DNC that wants to blame Russia for everything. There's another side to this, and it has to do with corporate media and American corporations not liking what Russian television does, which is to tell stories that corporate media can't tell because their advertisers will not let them tell the story. They will say, if you tell the story, we're going to pull the ad money. And some cat on the 50th floor, <laughs> some NBA guy, is making a decision that they can't tell the story. Oh, boy. Well, you know, sometimes the truth hurts, Mike. And, and you know, a second ago, you mentioned uh, cold, the Cold War. Um, do you feel that, that perhaps Western nations, the EU and the U.S. alike are essentially becoming echo chambers of itself because all of this does sound like Cold War rhetoric, doesn't it? Well, well, it is. We still have baby boomers around. Don't forget that. We still have baby boomers around. And if you talk to most baby boomers, they were all for invading Syria, invading, Li invading Libya. They are a fearful type. And until the baby boomer Cold War types move through, we're going to have this ridiculous conversation. Millennials, they don't have issues like this. They understand we are a world economy. We're a world co culture in many ways. It is the baby boomers that are causing this ridiculous conversation. Uh, and and it, it just seems to be picking up. Frankly, I think the more we talk about it, the better it is because you can shine a light on how ridiculous this whole thing really is. But now that's happening here in the U.S., but now we're seeing that the EU is passing resolutions uh, also calling RT, you know, this dangerous propaganda channel. How do yeah. you think the, the EU itself, the, the, the parliament, how are they going to respond to, quote, countering Russian propaganda? Well, the, the point is this. Again, you follow that story. The, pe the woman who came forward with that proposal. Understand, look at her history. She was with the World Bank. She has all these connections to corporations all over Europe. They, they, there is, there's, there's always a money trail on something like this. Either the arms industry wants to sell more weapons or uh, our, our particular corporation wants to shut down a story that maybe RT did two years ago and doesn't want to hear it again. All of these things add up. There, you can't just look at the face of this and say, I understand it. You have to look at the backstory. And most of the time, the backstory is going to involve money. And, you know, Mike, uh, last question for you is that uh, a lot of non-Western media, RT included, has obviously been very critical of the role of the, of the, uh, of the West in places like the Middle East and, and, and Libya. Uh, 
is critical examination now becoming uh, an existential threat to Western ideology? Real quickly. Well, no, I mean, not at all, unless we make it that. I mean, we make it that if we buy into this crazy talk that we're hearing from the weapons industry and corporate, in, in this mega corporation voice that's out there saying Russia's bad for us. Thank you for your critical examination. That was Mike Papantonio, known as America's lawyer and Ring of Fire radio host.